Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. To your younger brothers and sisters who would want to take up engineering in the future. And to your relatives. That's one way you can keep me going inspired and refreshed. Now, if you find my videos interesting and important to your studies, also, please don't forget to subscribe. Hello, future engineers, subscribers, viewers, and students. Here are another problems, light problems in coordinates and graphs, midpoint, formu midpoint formula for you to little by little and slowly by surely become better engineering students as you prepare your engineering life. I hope that these problems will instill your minds and help you become better students. So here we go, problem 9. In which quadrant is the given point? Uh, this is a very light problem, but that light problem, as we move on, will become a little bit heavy heavy until such time that you will become a uh, good engineering student. So 16 comma negative 4, x, the abscissa is positive, the ordinate is negative, so this is in quadrant 4. So for b, 7, both are positive, so this is in quadrant 1. So remember, in quadrant 1, all coordinates are positive. In quadrant 2, the abscissa is negative and the ordinate is positive. Quadrant 3, both coordinates are negative. In quadrant 4, the abscissa is positive and the ordinate is negative. So this is both negative, therefore it is in quadrant 3. Negative, so quadrant, both negative, so quadrant 3. Uh, negative pi comma 4, since it is the abscissa that is negative and the ordinate is positive, so this is in quadrant 2. Then both positive, quadrant 1. So let's proceed to problem 10. Describe in words the given set of points in the plane. All x, comma 0 with, with x real. So meaning to say y is 0. Since y is 0, that means the equation is we describe this point as y equals 0. This is actually the x-axis. So on the x-axis, remember, it's the, the y-coordinate or the ordinate is fixed at 0. It's only the abscissa that may have any value. So the best way to describe point x comma 0 with x real is it is the y it is the x-axis or with the equation y equals 0 or the x-axis. All 0, comma y with y negative. Since y is negative and x is 0, that represents the negative y-axis, so the downward axis from the origin. So we describe it as the negative y-axis. All x, comma y with x 0 and y is less than 0, so meaning to say x is positive and y is negative because y is less than 0. So when the abscissa is positive and the ordinate is negative, it is the point is on the fourth quadrant. So we describe x comma y on the fourth quadrant. Then all x comma 4 with x real, so meaning to say the ordinate or the y coordinate is again 4. It is represented by a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis, and the equation is y equals 4. So this best describes that point x comma 4 with x real. Then 10ey is greater than 5, so it means it is a horizontal line greater than a horizontal line parallel to the x-axis, which is above the line 5 units above the x-axis. So the region in quadrants 1 and 2, so it's also included quadrant 2, above y equals 0 or all 
points above the horizontal line y equals 5. So it's best also if we draw this in figure, you have a horizontal line through ordinates 5 and you shade all the region because all points on that region will have ordinates y greater than 5. Then f uh, x is equal to negative 2. So this is represented by a vertical line, two units to the left of the y-axis because the abscissa is negative 2. So it is the vertical line parallel to the y-axis and two units to the left of it. Then xy, the product of x and y is greater than 0, so it means the first and the third quadrant because in the first quadrant, x coordinates and y coordinates are both positive. So that's why the product would be greater than 0. In the third quadrant, x and y are both negative, so the product would still be positive or greater than 0. Then lastly, xy is equal to 0. Then it represents all points on the x and y-axis because on the x-axis, y is 0. And on the y-axis, x is 0. So the product of x and y would be 0. Again, on the, on the x-axis, y is 0. It is represented by this. All points on the x-axis, y is 0. And on the y-axis, which is represented by x equals 0, so x, all points on the x-axis, 0. So all points on the x and the y-axis. That would be the best description of this equation. Then problem 10, 11, find the other endpoint of the line segment having the given midpoint and endpoint. So we have the midpoint 7, 3 and endpoint 2, 4 to find the other endpoint and up to D. So our guide is midpoint is just the average of the coordinates, so average of the abscissas, y sub m, the, y, the midpoint of the line segment joining two points is the average also of the ordinates. So therefore, for problem one, this is the, mid, the abscissa, the midpoint of the abscissa 7, and it is the average of, so one half of, assuming it's point one that is the unknown coordinates of point one. So we denote the coordinates as x1 comma y1. So average of x1 and 2. So 7 times 2 is 14. Then transpose 2 to the left. 14 minus 2 is 12. So x1 is 12. Likewise, the midpoint y coordinate of the midpoint is 3. And it is 1 half of quantity y1 plus the or uh, ordinate of the other endpoint, which is 4. So cross multiply 3 times 2 is 6, then minus 4, 6 minus 4 is 2, so y1 is 2. Therefore, the other point will have coordinates of 12, comma 2. For B, uh, 6, 6 is 1 half of quantity x1 plus 1. So 1 half of quantity x1 plus 1. So 6 times 2, 12, then minus 1 is 11. So x sub 1 is 11. Likewise, negative 2 is equal to 1 half of quantity y1 plus 2. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, minus 2, transpose to the left, so negative 6. So y1 is negative 6. So the other endpoint, therefore, will have coordinates of 11, comma, negative 4. Then 11c, we have midpoint 1 half comma 4, the other endpoint 3 comma negative 3. So 1 half is equal to 1 half of quantity uh, x sub 1 plus 3. So we can cancel 2. So this becomes uh, 1, 1 here, 1. Then 1 minus 3 is equal to negative 2. So x sub 1 is negative 2. Then 
4 is equal to 1 half of quantity y1 plus negative 3. So that would be 1 half of quantity y1 plus negative 3 or quantity y1 minus 3. 4 times 2 is 8. Then transpose this to the left. 8 plus 3 is 11. So the other endpoint will have coordinates quantity negative 2 comma 11. Then 11 the midpoint negative 1 third comma 2 fifths. So negative 1 third is equal to 1 half of quantity negative 4 x sub 1 plus negative 4 thirds or x sub 1 minus 4 thirds. So negative 1 third times 2. So negative 2 thirds negative 2 thirds is equal to x sub 1 minus 4 thirds. So negative 2 thirds plus 4 thirds is 2 thirds, positive 2 thirds. So x sub 1 is 2 thirds. Likewise, 2 fifths is equal to 1 half of quantity y1 plus 7 over 10. So 2 times 2 over 5 is 4 over 5 equals y1 plus 7 over 10. And 4 fifths 4 fifths is 8 over 10 also, then minus 7 over 10. 8 over 10 minus 7 over 10 is 1 over 10. So y1 is 1 over 10. Therefore, point, two, uh, point P1 is 2 thirds comma 1 over 10. So that's it for this video.